Hello and greetings everyone to the November 7th Beehive production users call. We have Antron Igian, Hans, Andy, Matthias, Rod, all joining us from around the globe. And uh, currently the FreeBSD Developers Summit of Fall of 20, 20, 2024 is happening. And tomorrow will be the day two of the Fall 2024 FreeBSD Developers Summit. A very nice agenda both from vendors and developers and operators and users. So go there, have fun. We have questions from Matthias about bridging WLAN interfaces. A long lecture by Jan about Beehive nodes. And if we have time in the end, let's talk about BGP and IPv6 because some things are making me go crazy. And uh, before we continue, uh, for the ones who are watching early, uh, please uh, like and subscribe as 64% um, of you are watching but not subscribed yet. Uh, Matthias, if you do have audio, feel free. Otherwise, I'll just read your question, which was, why can't you successfully bridge uh, with WLAN interface and TAP? And the idea was you can bridge TAP, but WLAN depends on... Jan, you said it depends on the chip? So, um, it's been a while since I looked into the specifications, but basically Wi-Fi, unlike Ethernet, normally has a free address frame format where you have the let's say your laptop being connected as a station to the wi-fi access point um sending to something which is either an other station or behind the access point on some bridged network so now um the problem is the free address format has the destination address the access point address and your station address, so basically the MAC address of the Wi-Fi interface, which is associated with the access point. But your bridged uh, Beehive guest would use its own source MAC address, which is not the one of your Wi-Fi interface, uh -huh. and that cannot be really encoded in a way that you can learn it. And so either you just erase it and replace it, which wouldn't be right, or you uh, protect, spoof kind of your source MAC address uh, in the right frame, but then the access point will not like you. Um, so you need a, something different, which is the four address format commonly used for uh, Wi-Fi bridges or range extenders. But that is something which, as far as I know, FreeBSD doesn't really support and uh, some access points don't support it either, so you can't rely on that. Mm, and that's your problem, that you just cannot encode all four addresses in the frame format used by FreeBSD as a Wi-Fi uh, client. Maybe what wants to go into more low-level details. The, um, the basic crux gets down to the fact that when you bridge WLAN to TAP or anything like that. TAP has its own MAC address. And that MAC address is not properly associated in the Wi-Fi network association. So though the WLAN driver will in fact transmit the frame, the receiver will never see it because it doesn't it doesn't have an association to that Mac. What what Jan said is very much correct. It's there's just not a proper way to do that. To to possibly make it work would require that the FreeBSD WLAN driver and the Wi-Fi device drivers would need enhancements to behave as if they were Wi-Fi repeaters, I think would get us there, which starts using yes. the, it uses that, use, doesn't that use the four node form of the? Yes, but uh, uh, exactly yeah. that's a problem. Repeater, yeah, range extender, whatever you want to call it. Right. Uh, in marketing speak, it is basically using four address frames uh, so and that you have a separate address for the association to the access point and the Ethernet source MAC address. Right. And that further, if I remember right, to actually have that 
operate correctly requires an addition. You actually have to enter the Wi-Fi repeater MAC into the access point to tell it that this is a valid repeater MAC. Yep. And it has so to it's allow like, it. Yeah. The, the, the biggest answer is if you're in this situation is what you really want to do is you want to set up NAT and DNS masquerade on your beehive node and just use NAT. Yep. It's, it's the way around this that's effective. And if I can't. Uh, I, if you do I mean, we could, not the, the beehive host is a router it, uh, uh, and an annoying metal box doing network address translation. And so by the point the IP packet is encapsulated into a Wi-Fi frame, it looks like it's using the uh, source address, IP address of your FreeBSD Beehive host, and no uh, bridging is required because it's just at that point in the network stack a normal IP packet using the source IP address you have on that interface. And only when the response comes back do you do the stateful translation back. Uh, yeah, I do. Like, I do it in a little bit different way. And what I actually do is I create, instead of doing it all on the host, I actually create a VM and configure that VM to have, um, I pass in the Wi-Fi device and then run NAT and DNS masquerade and all of that stuff inside of that guest and then pass an ethernet tap device back up to the host that can then be configured in a bridge that all the other VMs can use. And so it kind of, it creates, it creates a little local network. <laughs> yeah. You can basically have a not appliance as an yet another beehive guest. Yep. And is that also or you gets could it... use a VNet enabled jail for that as well. Yes, you could do it in a jail. I do it in a heavyweight guest because then I can do all sorts of nasty things inside that guest and not worry about screwing my hotel. Totally fine. Um, in, 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 including passing multiple Ethernet devices out of it. Mm -hmm. So the other issue you will have is now that you um, found out that you can't really bridge, um, the question is, do you still want to bridge just so that you have one IP interface um, on the host? You can still have a bridge interface without an IP address on it, where basically you're a bridge. If you're doing it like Rod suggested, you would have uh, one a Beehive guest, which has a interface on both sides. Um, so, but still you have the problem that you will have, a, unless you're using it as a Rod on the stick, uh, if you yet, or create yet another bridge, if you do the same things, what you will, find out as when you stop Beehive, so shut down the virtual machine and Beehive exits, it also closes the tab interface. And the way a tab beha uh, interface behaves is the, if you close the device node, it sets the link state of the interface to down and if you have an address on that interface, the network route for the network you configured on the interface is removed. And unlike the IP address, it does not come back when you uh, bring the same interface up. So it preserves the IP address going up and down, but the network route for the locally di directly connected network is lost. Um, yeah, that's really annoying. And the easiest way to fix it is to um, set the IFF underscore link zero flag um, on the tab interface so that it does not go down when uh, it gets closed so that the network interface looks like it is still linked up. It does not go administratively down and your route is preserved. And then you don't have to reconfigure the route. And 
Stop using static routes. Run a routing protocol if you're routing. Just that's don't. No, 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 that's not the issue. You don't want a routing protocol for a direct con for the direct connection. If you have, let's uh, say, any, your... any, I will I will argue that any interface that goes up and down should be running a routing protocol. Period. <laughs> yeah, in a way, mm. you're right because. Even you could argue that something like a DHCP client is a very, very dumb uh, routing protocol mm -hmm. because it will reinstall the route every time it learns it. But um, yeah, the other way to fix this is to just uh, not open a top interface, but a VM net interface, which is just another name for a top interface that implicitly always sets the IF uh, link zero flag as uh, specified in the second to last paragraph of the tab driver man page on FreeBSD. It's all spelled out there, but unless you know what it is happening, uh, you will just uh, scroll past it because it will not have anything to make sense of it. And it's just, okay, but what does it mean? <laughs> it means... Do, do we still have it? support for, for Etsy IF up and Etsy IF down? So the, Yeah, the, but the, yes. we have we have That's ETC a, uh, I, um, start, uh, start, up and down at start and stop. Yes. But yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, That's it's so. still there. It's not going away. Um, and yes, you if can If you're going to do, do static, if you're going to do static, that's the place to add the statics. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And you can also add static routes, but yeah, you can't make them really sticky because your kernel will remove them. So you may con think you configured a static uh, route and said something about sticky, but it's not sticking around. <laughs> so um, the other way to handle this is to uh, always recreate the interface. That's the one at C start if dot interface name. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I don't RC think it's work. Yeah, and I don't think that it's actually documented in the man pages, but I might be wrong because I found this when I was reading uh, the network script. Oh, it's I, documented I... in uh, the RC conf man page. Uh, if you look there, it's in the endless description of the network interfaces uh, <laughs> list. Uh, there, but if you look, finally, you can add IF config options in this variable in addition to the etc start underscore IF file. Oh, and the other thing uh, is you should be really careful what you put in the, those files because those get sourced into the running RC script. And yes. not executed inside a subshell or uh, spawned as their own script. It said it's really slurped into the running shell. So you can uh, I, mess I, up variables. I used to use that for jailer mm -hmm. to hard code the MAC addresses of VNet jails, which was a very nice, you know, nifty um, tool. The better way start, to do start, that. Start IF should be run in a shub shell. Yes and no. The idea here is, I think, that you can actually view all the variables and potentially modify them in ways if you really, really want to tinker with the innards of uh, the RC script thing. Because you're in this, because otherwise you can't change variables from that script. I mean, probably eighty plus percent of the time. Any change to a variable here is um, unintentional, and it may be a good idea to just wrap your whole uh, start underscore IF script in uh, in a subshell invocation that you don't accidentally modify that. Just put it in round braces and. And braces are okay. the ones, maybe I should add what's the round. Um, so. Can, can I ask, can I ask a, a quick follow-up questions with a, a little bit of context? Always. 
<laughs> Thank you. Uh, so my, my question would be because, as I mentioned, I've seen a lot of people being stumped by that that do not have the uh, all this context in in networking, and um, I'd like to 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 do some kind. Uh, so, best case scenario, a way to to uh, uh, tool around this uh, is described somewhere. Uh, and but if it's not, I'd like to to uh, uh, write up uh, a way to to solve that use case. And the, the use case I, I'm trying to to solve for is uh, in the spirit of this being the uh, enterprise beehive uh, uh, conversation, right? Uh, one of my uh, goals is to to enable uh, developers at large and our developers in particular. Um, to use FreeBSD uh, as their daily driver. Uh, and I'm talking about mm, not, not uh, kernel developers, but uh, more uh, front-end, back-end, uh, infra uh, engineers who all use laptops and who routinely find themselves uh, using, uh, I mean, connecting through their Wi-Fi uh, interface, and the fact that they could not, that I could not tell them how to, um, how to have uh, working VMs in in the sense of VMs that are able to connect with the uh, wider uh, internet while they are on Wi-Fi is a huge blocker for them. So if I can document this. Uh, for our developers, but uh, for the community, it would be great. So, um, is there any anything you guys can point me to, or can I come back to you uh, offline for you to help me uh, um, work around uh, this and uh, and write it up in some way? I don't know the easy to follow tutorial style documentation cool. with a. Uh branding in Fury, uh, so I'm willing to help you if you write it up. <laughs> yeah, there, 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 there is, is uh, the offer. The offer. Um, there is an article in the the forums that is Beehive with WN0 NAT for my guess that I think... Wait, are we talking if, NAT or Bridge? Because... The now, you can, you think just the wireless networking and bridging is not going to work on FreeBSD, period, yeah. right now. That's okay. technically not an ability. Because okay. this, because technically this is what anyone would need for to make the network, you know? Like that, like this, this is it, basically. Where instead of, of course, the GL net is like Beehive net and like you're done. Now you have the proper... Yeah, basically yeah. that concept would, would do it. You need to, do you got to... You're missing a few things, like you need to turn on IP forwarding and yep. and I and or IPv6 forwarding. It doesn't look like your case there will handle v6 stuff at all. Um, There's also a truly cursed option of just running WRT instead of um, inside of uh, Beehive with PCI. That's kind of what through. I do. <laughs> that's kind of what and I do. Is he running? Uh, Wi-Fi box, so uh, yeah, and uh, WRT has support for this for address format, but again, it means that you have to have control oh. over the access points, uh, and I never you have thought... to have a card which can do it. Because as far as I remember, not all Wi-Fi cards even can use this format as a Wi-Fi client. Um. So if you do it like that, it may work, but it doesn't help you in a corporate setting where the access point will just disable your uh, credentials if you try something like that. But Jan, may I ask? You're trying to spoof a MAC address on our company network, bam, your Wi-Fi um, credentials uh, uh, on the, um, whatever you're using as your, authorization source are just disabled. Maybe even your whole account gets disabled or something if you have some truly paranoid operator. Jan, may I ask? So you would have open WRT in a VM. 
which mm -hmm. is okay yes sorry this was this is my exact question does it have to be a pcie wi-fi or can it be any wi-fi because let's say i have a lenovo thinkpad t480 mm -hmm. and i want the, the wi-fi chip on that to be that's passed PCIe. to the vm that's pcie okay because what other options is there? Oh, there's a USB option. An yeah. two connector. What yeah. matters is can your chipset and BIOS support PCIe pass through? Yeah. Is anything else question. tied to that because of the hardware level, then you may find out that you're passing over your Bluetooth and potentially some other things you don't want yeah. to use. Uh, at uh, so that you can only basically give uh, over big chunks of your network. For example, you may find out the hard way that Oh damn it! The Ethernet is on the same uh, um, basically do domain or whatever the term is in there in the um, IOMMU, and so suddenly you find that you have to give it things you can't uh, spare on the host because some laptops are just wired, uh, yeah, like crap. But yeah, yeah. So we I see that someone I would see use this the feature. So I see this, which means that mm -hmm. I can actually do it in a PCI pass through. Probably. Um, yeah. Do I need do you, I need to reboot or can I just unload the kernel module? Uh, you can do even better. You can use DevCTL to detach <laughs> uh, uh, the the running instance from a driver and then okay. attach the PPT driver. I have a system uh, the, on production. All are written correctly, that shouldn't leak any resources. Potentially, you will see a warning that if you do that, some drivers may uh, leak a few pages of memory, and the allocator will catch that. Oh yeah, this uh, memory zone wasn't empty when it was destroyed in the zone allocator. I have a system um, on production right now. Do you want to do it? And that would also be technically the, the, the non-official documentation for Matthias. So then he can rewatch the video and document it. Of course, Depends. assuming that we're... Do you our... want to experiment uh, on your production system or do you want to set up uh, a dedicated production network in addition to your testing network? No, no, we are real men. We test on production. What the hell, bro? <laughs> yeah. Hello, Uncle Dan. Hello. Uh, so I okay let's let's see okay so this is a, a laptop which is currently used uh, for out of out of what do you call that out of band management out of bound management out of band management out of band out of band, band. Out of band management yes so yeah that's the laptop it basically sits in a customer site then it VPNs to our infrastructure the reason for that is so that I can connect to the customer's infrastructure without relying on their VPN because they usually don't know how to configure a proper VPN so the laptop is there I do have access to it yeah. and I, I see this IWM 0 6100 that's the PCIe slot ready mm -hmm. no according to VM pass and that's the wireless 8260. We can actually configure wireless on this, basically using Wi-Fi box, if I got your idea correctly. Uh, Illumos mm -hmm. friends, do you have anything to add or should we do this on production right now? Dan reports the... the well, if you want to listen to me. Yes, I, I always. I'm just going to take this in while you guys are doing something else. Okay. Well, I was, I was going to say, I, I'm uh, happy that you have a blog, but do you know that you have the perfect voice for like a podcast? Or like, you know what I mean? Like you can also do the audio version of your blog. I just wanted to throw that out, you know, in case you want. Like I don't a blog have the or... perfect voice and the perfect face for a podcast. I, I used to. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do a podcast uh, tech snap a while back for about a year. I just learned something new about Dan. Okay, uh, I'll share a terminal. Um, there's think. one more option you can consider. Yes, and that sir. That is a lip slurp. If you what? want something quick and cursed. Uh, I don't know if it's available in 14, but it's it exists in current. And that is... Uh, the option of using lip slurp um, 
with basically the same functionality as Trimo host uh, for warding. Sure. Where okay. you run a virtual um, nut router in, oh, yeah. in, sort of Beehive in the in the form of libslot, which then basically makes the um, so it does the nutting and uses ho normal host sockets to just basically set up one end of the flow and then translate that into Ethernet frames uh, for the virtual machine. It's cursed, it's not very fast, but the advantage is that it is the least invasive way to put it into the host network stack because it just looks like uh, Slurp is now uh, just another uh, process using sockets. I see. Uh, so, yeah, you don't have to set up any network interfaces on the host. It just looks yep. like a local yep. process is uh, sending packets, sending and receiving uh, packets. Yep. Um, you can also plumb all of this through NetGraph and use ng-nat. And... Yeah, true. Yeah, of course you can. <laughs> NetGraph can do anything you want it to do. And if it can't, you can use a, a ng soc uh, to write your own user space prototype of your custom uh, tie uh, hooked uh, and yeah you could you could actually probably write a netgraph node to do the mac mangling that you would need to do wait, to wait, actually wait. you don't need to do that that is that's already built in no it isn't no not yes, what i'm talking is. about no no what mac, you have to do mac, mac is mangling the... so that you could bridge the wi-fi device yeah you can do is that not no, not really. No. User what, and what ng node? What ng node does the Mac mangling that you would need to be able to bridge a Wi-Fi device to multiple tabs? Dev, Devin has an example in user share. One sec. No, don't believe it. G, yeah, no, seriously. J N G was netgraph. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, here, set from misc zero and one. That's not what it. That means. doesn't do. Yeah. Promiscus just effectively disables the uh, destination MAC address filter on receive, so that you will. Then my, see then I'm sorry. Any, uh, I'm sorry. Then, then it's not that or one. This gate Wi-Fi frame. That, that and not the promiscuous. Uh, the, the pr right. The promiscuous mode just stops it from from filtering based on MAC address, so that, that the, you can't the other pass the one, packets. Uh, is interesting. The auto SRC. Yeah, is it in ng ether or the other one? Ng i ether. I keep forgetting which one is which. That's the one. Yeah, set auto. So this one is sets the automatic source address override flag. This message includes where is it? Uh, a cause causes all outgoing packets to have their source Ethernet address field overwritten with the device's unique Ethernet address. If this flag is set to zero, blah 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 blah. So this. I remember because okay, I that is really really nasty because it does not do what you claim, but it may make it work, work despite that because you're just really re filling what? in your. I mean that with... works. That that works on the outbound packet, but what happens to the packet in response coming back? And well, that's the packet, uh, it's I'm easy doing the outward happened. one. I, I, want to, I just is, wanted to say so. Use we, your own MAC address for sending. He, so he, he the, is, the access point is happy. And as long as there's no filtering to require you to only use the uh, source IP address assigned to you, it works. The problem is that you're, because now you're unable to use multiple source MAC addresses, you can't run more than one DHCP client. No, no, wait, wait, wait. one second. Oh, yes, you're right. One second. One second. Your, let, um... let me let me let me bring a real life example, and you tell me if this will work on, for Wi-Fi or not. On shitty other people's computer, aka the cloud, uh, they have a uh, software defined network, and their software defined network is built was still is uh, on on some providers built in a way that your mm -hmm. single VM can have multiple IP addresses, but all of the IP addresses have to come out with a the same MAC address. Okay? That's so very typical. That's that that's completely fine. 
that's yes. that's that's just you can any bsd box if device can do multiple ips on a single map that's exactly. not the problem i know the problem wait, is wait. is on the the return packet that's coming back to that mac address has to be remapped to the mac that you mangled on the way out so so here's what we did we had a vnet jail in a vm which obviously I set one of the IP addresses on the host and the other IP address on the jail. It did not work. But when I enabled the audio source with NetGraph, it started to work. So the outgoing packets had the IP in the IP address header, it had the IP of the jail and the MAC address of the host. So now what I don't know, when... I don't know what happens when it comes it... back. I'm just saying that it worked. Okay. Yeah, so that's because what happens that's here? because the jail stack gets the sorts it by IP address. We've already decided to receive it based on MAC, and then we sort it to the jail by IP. So what happens is if you set the stack effectively, your ng ether um, interface. So maybe we should take a step back and describe what happens here. So when you use ng ether, it attaches to um, each Ethernet-like interface, the mm -hmm. moment you load the kernel module for that uh, net graph type. And then it, you can basically look at all the Ethernet frames and you can send Ethernet frames for it. And this is where you would then plug in the net graph bridging if you do it for net graph instead of a normal IP stack. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But when you then send the frame through your bridge, everything kind of looks okay-ish. But the big issue now is that you're changing as it goes through the ng ether, the, your, your outgoing source MAC address to the one the Wi-Fi interface requires. Okay, so your frame makes it out and is not immediately rejected by the access point because it has a free frame format and it has the right source address. So um, it makes it into the access point. It goes out. But the big problem for virtual machines is, especially for what uh, Matthias is asking for, is you almost certainly want them to run a DHCP client. And DHCP leases are by MAC address. I see what you mean. So you um, only have one MAC address per Wi-Fi client. Yeah which means the host has already used it up unless it doesn't use an IP address. And when the any packets is then sent back to you, it is because Ethernet and Wi-Fi wi are um, logically at least buses. Mm. It has a destination address. That's your MAC address. It will make it through the hardware filter because it's in reply to the source address you would set up by that. And then it, it's in your, the kernel because, okay, that is an Ethernet address. It has arrived in my IP stack. Everything is fine. It looks at the IP address and then decides what to do with it by IP address. So I guess this if works you in have the cloud environment. Graph, see yeah. that frame out of the queue effectively and not give it back to a normal IP stack then NetGraph can do with that frame whatever it wants. What it can't do is make multiple MAC addresses visible through a single Wi-Fi interface. So I guess that yeah. works on the cloud because... It works because... Because it's Ethernet yeah. in the cloud. Oh, the okay. Ethernet doesn't have the Wi-Fi imposed restrictions that... No, no it's... It not just that, it, that it, case it, 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 no, no, they, it, it, it worked because it was routed. They know that this yeah. IP address needs to go to this specific VM. Exactly. And then oh, the they're not cloud, using DHCP. You're, you're, exactly. Yeah. You're not using DHCP. And because of that, it works. And you have a route to put in there. And you can configure it in such a way that it statically works. And that's what you're doing in the cloud, I assume, because you're probably yeah. not running. Uh, it shows the be... DHCP server behind the NG Ether. You could run a DHCP server on the bridge in 
So if you have then another NGE E phase yeah, yeah, yeah. on the bridge, that would see the unmangled <laughs> Ethernet frames. So you could have a local DHCP server, mm -hmm. which would work for what your What about a DHCP setup. relay? What about using a DHCP relay on the host? Uh, oh, so you would have that e, e, NG, e, e phase okay. on the NetGraph bridge, run a DHCP relay there, and the relay bypasses yeah. that. That may work if the upstream DHCP server accepts your relay. Very, but if it does not allow relays, you're out of yeah. luck. Okay, oh. makes sense. Okay, so back to here. Um, it's all cursed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Back to here. I have IWM0, mm -hmm. which is a wireless device by Intel at slot mm -hmm. 6100. Uh, I have a free BSD 14. I have... Are you connected via Wi Fi? No, no, no. I'm currently connected over this. And the member interfaces is okay. EM0. It's EM zero. So we 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 if if we do everything fine, everything should be fine. So now you look at DevCTO. Uh, you have to tell me what to do. Yeah, the okay. command is DevCTO. Okay. okay, got it. And uh, first, I would um, just run it, and you see what happens. It doesn't do anything evil right out of the box. So um, you can now use it mm -hmm. to detach a device. Uh, for detaching, you can use the driver and index. Mm -hmm. And for reattaching, you will find that if there's no driver attached, you have to use the PCI ID. Okay. So I now uh, if you run DMESC Peace. and grab for I, yep. no, just uh, DMESC. D, D message. Okay. So now if I do PCI conf.lvls and I look for IWM, I would not find it because the device Yes, is you'll now... find it as none at... Yep. It won't be none IWM yet. anymore, but it's right yep. there as none. Yep. And oh. okay. now you have to uh, use the PPT driver. Okay. Uh, to att and attach it to that. PPT. Why don't we have a man page oh, for PPT? PPT? I, mean, I don't PPT? think... think uh, or is, maybe you can use it with none, but I think the the blocking driver. Um, that, a place I don't think there is any man page for PTT. That's so weird. Uh, but it should be in loader dot loader dot com. No, no, not mistaken. Now you can do BFPCIE password. Mm -hmm. Um, and instead of doing it statically, you would. Just use dev CTL yes. for PPT. Uh, yeah, just do a dev control attach. Yeah. Got it. Dev, dev control. But you need the but you need the PCI E number. PCI yeah, com e. L V at the bottom we have sixty one. Well, this is what I'm zero. Yes. That's right yep. there. Yeah. Okay. What do I do now? Not the last colon. Not the last colon. PCI 0610. Zero. zero, yeah. And no, the last zero you want to oh, probably. The colon I don't you, think. Got yeah. it. Okay. Now you now, should be able to use. Okay. Attach. Dev CTL attach. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, no, so wait. You have to set the driver, yeah. Set. Set. Yeah. Uh, is it PPT or PTT? PPT. Set word keywords. I think that people it's it's dev control set driver space mm -hmm. and PPT space PCI dev, ID. Got it. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we have any examples. We don't have anyone here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Dev CTL set driver device. Mm -hmm. And driver would be PPT, PTT, PPT. I hate this. Okay, PPT, PCI pass through. Oh, now it makes sense. Okay, not PCI pass through. Okay, PCI pass through. So now I'm going to do that. Did not complain. D message. We've got something. Yep, PPT. Sure. Okay, 
VM pass. It says ready. Great. That's already nice. So now we can pass that device to whatever we want. Okay, great. Now, first of all, thank you for teaching me how to use DevCTL. I've never had the time to do that. Okay, what do I do next? I guess reboot. I need... Reboot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And with a goddamn super micro that takes two hours to reboot, and not two hours, but easily 20 minutes to reboot. Okay, now I have a lot of VMs here that I don't care about. But is everything shut down? Yeah, nothing is running. Great. Um, so if if I was able to do this much, it means that my BIOS and my CPU supports everything, right? Most likely, yes. Your pass through an IOMMU are working. IOMMU okay. setup could still fail so that it doesn't work, but it Got means you. there aren't any obvious blockers visible already. Got it. Okay, well, let's see how much mem I have. I have 13 gig for you. I think this is a 24 gig machine. Yes, it is. And do I have any storage available? Z pool list. I have a uh, hundred gig free. That's nice. Okay. And I think there's a package called Wi-Fi box, right? Yes. Release zero. Yes. PKG. PKG search. What? You you may not have Wi-Fi box for fourteen point zero. Really? Why not fourteen? Uh, wait, that's Can zero. I... Because it wasn't built at the time fourteen dot zero shipped. So if you're uh, that's oh you're a bit behind here, but it shouldn't include any kernel modules. Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi box. The there you go, Wi-Fi box. Yeah, and you need okay. one for your chip, which is IWL no, Wi-Fi. I think you just install Wi-Fi box, and it'll you'll yeah, get the other. Yeah, maybe it puts in, in all of them. Okay, I'm gonna do, and I'm on the 1.3, which I assume is not the latest. Let's go to Fresh Boards, if you know that website. It's a very nice website. Uh, Wi-Fi never box. Heard of it. Never, I know, right? Server too busy. Please try again later. Why am I not logged in? Uh, I should have been logged in. Do I even remember my username and password? God knows. Uh, Maybe it's I, time to move to us. Yeah. Fresh ports. Oh, yeah, I do have a username and a password. Okay. Thank you, Password Manager. And I can log in. I can. And now I can do Wi Fi box in the search. I think you want I... the IWL Wi Fi one. Yeah. Well, the latest is zero. Uh, sorry. The latest is one five. I, I, in packages, I see one mm -hmm. three. Uh, the question is are there too many differences or would I suffer? Uh, I hope not. I hope not. I am not sure. Uh... I'm just going to go go ahead and do this. Yeah, Wi-Fi box doesn't install a lot of stuff. See, it, it automatically pulled in Alpine and the, and okay. the yes. dependencies. And, and I don't... I think, well, I think you have to manually install the right image for your card, so you want the no, IWL. No, no huh? you do not. No. Oh, that, the, that changed. The, the, if, in fact, I if you install that, you will have headaches. If you okay. install that, you will have headaches. Okay. Uh, I have things enabled. So wait, do I have this in my uh, no, that's not an AMD system. Com? It's not an AMD system. Okay. This is okay. the AMD style device pass through. What you have to have is uh, the well, uh, need to do VT dash D. VT dash D. I see what you mean. But, but uh, uh, since PPT worked, it means I don't need to do anything. Hmm. Hopefully, let's see how it works. Okay, and okay. You have to reboot, sense. go into the EFI, and then find the right option on your ThinkPad because it can be disabled, and at least yeah. on older ThinkPads. Okay, well, I mean, we can do it over Wi-Fi box, or we can do it manually. Uh, Matthias, which one would you prefer, the low level level or the high level level? That sounds like <laughs> a question. very stupid question. Uh... I I I think that Wi-Fi box sounds sounds great. Be rare that you need a Wi-Fi which allows you to do that on the access point and 
if you have controllers in the controllers and so on. Mm -hmm. So if you're, for example, okay. in a coffee shop uh, or on a conference setting or in an enterprise Wi-Fi installation, it mm -hmm. probably won't help you. Yeah. It mm -hmm. may help work at home where you have your home router and if it's not complete crap, you can at least allow yourself to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, the, then the, the most, the, the more robust uh, um, approach, I guess. Yeah, not bridging is a more robust approach or bridging locally and then nothing, thereby hiding the fact that there was ever a bridge from the Wi-Fi. So, okay, wait, I feel dumb. What should I do now? That Wi-Fi box and see if it works. Install package install Wi-Fi box dash IWL Wi-Fi. That's Supposedly my Linux you're not Wait a second. Waiting um, a second. Say no. Saying no. And don't install that manually because, as has been said, it, apparently Wi-Fi box has some stuff built in and may got just... it. So I'll do start, but I don't know what to do next. I think I'm going to do start. I'm going to do start guest, right? Man, no Wi Fi box. Because I don't want it to run DHCP or anything, you know, so I don't lose a connection or something. Mm, guest, guest only. Maintain the console device and the networking interface, native networking interface and guest. The, that latter is required because the network is bound to the virtual machine that turns the guest. Okay. Null modem device and guest. Okay. VM kernel module. Oh, so it's the other way around. So I need to do VMM. I don't know about netif because I don't want it to change my networking. I'll just do guest and see what happens. I guess. I, okay, I guess. Let's, let's do that. Hopefully, I won't lose connection. Otherwise, I have to go tomorrow to the customer site. Uh, go. Okay. No PPT driver is attached due to lack of device. Cannot proceed. Okay, no tap interface is available. Cannot proceed. That's interesting. KLD stat. I see VMM. I don't see... Where's tap? It shouldn't tap be here, or is tap part of the no. kernel? Tap, tap is, the, is uh, part of the kernel, yes. Okay, then control And it's C. not the tap which is missing. It's the first part preventing you from getting the second. I don't get it. What do you mean? Um, so... AUX. Yeah, so Wi-Fi box is now kind of stuck. I'll just do... Uh, Kill it. Wi-Fi box uh, stop. stop. Stopping Wi-Fi box. Come on, Wi-Fi box. No link tap interface found. Okay, and did this stop? This one did not stop. Okay, uh, pgrep-lf, I think. Uh, Wi-Fi. Yep, there is a daemon. Uh, let's do psauxd and look for Wi-Fi box which is a daemon. What else do we have other than that? It keeps That's restarting. It, it keeps restarting. It I see what you mean. So let's take that PID and do kill dash nine. Sorry, process. Okay, now we're good. Okay, so that did not work. Mm. Make sure to clean up the VMM device too. Make sure yeah, to clean control. up the... So Keep run ls slash dev vmm to see if there's a vmm device left. Okay, dev vmm, vm. Nope, there is no dev vmm at all. Okay, then you don't have a virtual machine. Okay. So is vmm available? Yes. And MDM? Yes. Uh, oh, those should not be available, right? Those shouldn't hurt either because they're not attached. I see. I'll just unload them anyway. KLD unload. IFIWL Wi-Fi and IWM. Okay. KLD stat. Great. Much cleaner. Next up, let's do um, why is PF.KO loaded? Oh, maybe Wi-Fi dev wi device did that. I, a Wi-Fi box might have done that, I guess. Mm -hmm. I might be wrong. 
No, those are for me. Oh, no, never mind. It was me. It was me. Apologies. It was me. Okay. Man, wife, buy box again. Uh, files provided in user local Etsy Wi-Fi box. Let's go there. User local Etsy Wi-Fi box. Great. Okay. Nice. Okay. What do I have to look into here? Uh, oh, okay. So I can have it as a service. Okay. And it recommends that I block IWM and IWL Wi-Fi. I did. Great. We can start it as a service. Okay, great. Uh -huh. Those are the routing parts. We're not even close to that yet. Do I need to do anything in the configuration? That's what I want to know. Oh, there we go. So there's a log. Do you have to specify the um, password device? I need to specify Beehive, Beehive, sorry. Vim in the Beehive user conf. local ETC Wi Fi Got box, it. Beehive Conf. Yes. Uh, and for that, I'm going to do VM pass. And here's the string that I need. Okay. And I'm going to put it in here like this. PCI 1, SO0. Yeah. So this is done. Um, sure, and let's 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 increase that. Do I need to? I don't need to. Fine, let's keep it. And MD to activate the MDS based. Open WRT. Is not... mm. Maybe you want to enable that so that you have a text console into your let's, VM. Yeah, let yeah, let's enable that. So what else do we have in here? We have app config directory. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so this is a configuration directory that I can share. Oh, nice. Okay. We have a appliance directory, which has a lot of things in here. I don't know if I need these, but okay, sure. What else do I have? I have a core.conf. No idea what this is for. Okay. And we have a WPA supplicant, which is which looks like it's the same. Yeah, the app config points to WPA supplicant. Okay. Um, I guess this is good. Now let's do the Wi-Fi box start again. It should okay, it's not, have to. It's not complaining anymore. And oh yeah, I, I would not see it in here, of course, but I can do VM um not VM, Wi-Fi box status is running in my if config did anything change. Have a tab zero? Yes, in we the have a, box zero. Yep, we have a tab zero, which is which goes to the B VM, I Run guess. And you and should we have, uh, see what had changed. And I also have Wi-Fi box zero, which is a new interface, which is a bridge, right? Yes, it is. Okay. Now I can do D message, and we can see that that's exactly what happened. Yep, bridge one, changing the name to Wi-Fi box. Absolutely great. Now I can do Wi-Fi box, um, let's say a console, and I might get a console connected. Login. I have no idea what to do. Root. Root it is. Okay. IPA. There we go. We have something. Uh, there's an ETH zero. There's a, a Linux Wi-Fi interface. Yes. Why do I have the ETH zero? Oh, that's for me. It's a tablet right? interface, which right. goes back right. to the bridge. Yeah. I wonder if we can bridge these it two. Expects, it expects the host to be on 10.0.0.2. Yes. yes. True. Yes. Okay. So let's start with the Wi-Fi part first. Um, I, I, do I know how to do this? What's yes, in your I WPA do. supplicant? Go, go to Etsy share Wi-Fi box or no. Well, hmm. there's that one, but that's not the one that's in use by Wi-Fi box. That's your local. No, no, that's the no, one that's in Wi-Fi wi box. Wi box. He's inside I'm of wi in the Wi-Fi box. box. Yes, but the way you want to modify this is outside of Wi-Fi boxes. There is a ah, WPA supplicant file. Otherwise, what you get is just destroyed on start and stop and all of that. Uh, I see. You, so they're not using uh, 9P okay. or something to mount that. Correct. Community. They just, they, oh, they, okay. if I remember right, they copied this in on startup. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to my or maybe, phone. No, wait a minute. No, I think they may be using 9P and they're accessing this file. What you see inside is this file. Oh. I know this. You don't want to do a login to your Wi-Fi box and modify shit inside of there. You want to do everything in the host files. 
Uh, let's see if it's pointing anywhere. No, it's not. Do they have anything in here? Linux or C? No, we don't care about that. Um, oh, mount. We can see things. Oh, there you go. App config. Yep, it's using 9P. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you nice. don't want to modify the files in. Well, I don't know. Did yeah, you modify it, them inside? Does it, it write it, it out? It would be the same. Yeah. It's, it's yes, right. So it, how, so it should work. Okay. It works like yeah. an NFS mount would. So now I need to find um, Wi-Fi thingies in there. And for that, I can do WPA sub, WPA CLI, right? Not found. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it's w not. You can't run any of that crap inside. That's sad. Okay, then actually, let's do, there's uh, No, there's actually all the mapping and everything and stuff. And you're supposed to be able to run WPA CLI for, on the host. And it's mapped through a device to get to it. But I've had very little luck working on that. In general, you don't log into Wi-Fi box unless you're doing deep yeah. level troubleshooting. You do it all from the host side. Okay. When configured you, by the guest. I did proxy the WPA supplicant socket. Yes. Yes, okay. they proxy that. That's why it had okay. to install so you can... um, Netcat uh, Net SO or whatever that is. There's a uh, SO. Okay. So, so, so can't. It uses yes. a, So you yeah. just have to specify WPA underscore supplicant to you with the right socket. Uh, what's the socket? Let's do sock stat. Dash LU. Dash uh, listen Unix, right? Yeah. So we have right those two. I'm guessing it's this one. Yes. I'm going to do WPA CLI with, sorry, uh, path to socket is dash P. Okay. So let's do dash P that. Could not connect to WPS yeah, yes. supplicant. <laughs> That's what you had a problem with. Okay, yeah, got it. I, okay. I never did get that working. It's it's supposed to work, but okay. You need uh, a different WPE for that. And Wi-Fi. I don't know, but what I'm trying to because I used IW config when I was using Linux back in the day. Now the command obviously has been changed to IW. And for yeah, that, I need to do IW, I'm guessing, VLAN zero scan. You need to say dev space IW LAN. Ooh, oh, maybe too much no, information. No, I'm yeah, going to grab for SSID. Ah, we've got something. Okay. So, yeah, that's the one, total link. Okay, I know that one. I know that one. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T. What's there we go. The random hex uh, strings there. That could be either in Russian or Armenian. Oh, yeah. So 8-bit encodings. Yeah. S, T. Wait, where could is... Could letter 9 or something? Why don't yeah, I... I'm looking at the... I'm, uh -uh, I'm sorry, gentlemen. I'm... I'm also trying to find the password. Uh, I'm guessing it should be in my laptop saved somewhere. Come on, Mac OS. Come on, Mac OS. Where are you? Other? No, no, no. Keychain. No. Keychain. Thank you, man. Are, are we still doing this all in the recorded session? Yes, we are all doing this in the recorded it's session for other people to see. All to uh, enjoy our... Ad hoc approach. Yeah. I need to have you. here. I swear to God, I did connect to that device before. Why can't I? Wait, where's the name again? Total link. Yeah, I remember I connected to that one before from my computer, if I am not mistaken. So what am I doing wrong? I feel... Is it in passwords? It should be in passwords. Uh, let's look for another Wi-Fi. Let's have it's a look at in that. your yeah, login exactly. keychain. Uh, yeah, it has an, as an airport and password. network password. And, yeah, uh, it should be named by SSID. Yeah. Oh, maybe I can do date modified to find the new passwords that I've connected to, right? If I'm not dumb, that should work. Yes, I am not dumb. What the hell is... Yeah, every time I open my keychain, I start freaking out because I see things that, well, it freaks me out. What can I say? Uh, why 
What do, no, the other way around. The date is the other way around. Okay. Not today. Maybe a couple of days ago. So, there's so many application passwords in the Mac OS keychain. I want to go crazy about those. It's, it's, it's the like, right place for applications to store their credentials instead of putting it in some XML file or JSON file on their own. Oh, I agree with that. I definitely agree with that. Okay, so what what pass what what networks do we see there? We see okay. Sure, I don't sure. uh, agree, but uh, Apple made it really clear that that's how you're supposed to do it, and most of the time it's an most of solution. the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I feel terrible right now, gentlemen, as I am not sure if I'm able to find the uh, Wi-Fi thingy. I'm going to feel very terrible if we cannot connect to it. I mean, obviously, I could call someone and ask them, but but let's okay. Let's let's not lose. Okay, that's Do you have floor. a WPA conf on the um, I'm on Mac OS. No, on the FreeBSD system. Have yes. you ever connected that to it? Oh, Do that's remember that you're, very... you're still recording your screen. So if you're I'm fine with that. All of this is gonna change anyway. Uh no, no, a my free BSD box never connected to Wi-Fi, which is exactly why we are doing this. <laughs> which is exactly why we are doing this. Uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna try to find it again. Okay, that's that's the other building. Wait, is it available here? No, it's not. No, it's not. This is terrible. This is terrible. And there's so many. Oh wait, can I filter? I hope I can filter. Error. Yes, I can filter. Okay, now I can see more things. Uh, let's see if we see that. We don't see that. Maybe the list is not complete. Nah, the list was actually complete. Said the you have an older MacBook, which may have a credential stored. Well, so my MacBook is supposed to have the dust. credentials. My MacBook is supposed to have the credentials in it, but I don't see the credentials, which is very weird because I did connect to it. Like, uh... Did you use multiple local users? No, no, not at all. Not to my knowledge, sir. No, no. I can, I can easily say that. Okay, maybe it's the same password. I'm gonna just go with that. Um, maybe we'll, we'll figure it out. Okay, so let let let's assume I have the password. Let's assume that. Okay, how do we connect next? So we would go to user local at C Wi-Fi box, right? Go into app config. Go to the WPA supplicant, and I would paste things in here, I guess. Mm. Then I would do, what do I do here, Wait, Jan? I, network. That's the issue you. why you couldn't use it, because there is no control interface specifier to bind. Let's enable that. Let's enable it also said the group. I think you have to that. And let's also enable update config so I can update it on the fly. Okay, in that case, if I disable this, delete this, sorry, I do that. Now let's do something way more interesting. I'm gonna do exit. I'm gonna do one, two, three. Okay. I'm gonna do Wi-Fi box stop. Restart. Oh, restart. Is that available? Yes, it is. Yeah, okay. Believe. Okay, it's restarting. The PPT device could not be destroyed. And then, okay, okay. So, did you work or not? Wi Fi box status is running. Uh, wi Fi box, I want to say console, just to see what's happening. Come on, bring me a login console. You can do this. I believe in you. I believe in you. Is it running here? Sock stat dash lesson Unix. Well, it is running here. Yeah, that's for sure. And why aren't you running here? Unfortunately, there is no control T in Linux to see what, what, what's happening. Looped. Yes. No, nothing. Okay, fine. Oh, it was not done yet. Okay. Now it's done. Okay, root. Now we're in. PSAUX. 
Oh god. Okay, I don't know what these are, so I'm just gonna do instead um uh, mount. Can you test SS? Uh SS dash L for list oh there's no SS. Netstat? Oh there's Netstat. Oh that makes me happy. Dash L. No, it won't. It's Linux Netstat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's what's raw? This, the problem with it's any of this is, is, this, is this Wi-Fi box is really um, under configured for debugging. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm going to assume it's working. Okay. I'm just going to assume that. I'm going to do WPA CLI. Uh, I think it was dash P and then I'm going to run this. Go. Can't Could connect. Not connect. Got you. Yeah. Fine. We'll figure that again in a second. I mean, if, if the Linux utilities work, which they never do, otherwise we wouldn't be here. Ah, let's see. Unix sockets, dash X. Okay. Okay, we have some. We have some things in here. Let's try the other one. P2P dev WLAN 0. Maybe that one would work. Uh, P2P, do I? Yep, I have that too. Okay, great. I'm going to do that. Could not connect. OK. Is it running? That's the other question. Uh, PS, AUX, grab WPA. Yes. Yes, WPA is running. But, oh, it's I think running. I see what's wrong. Sure. Those are UDP datagram sockets. And I think WPA CLI wants to talk over a TCP. It's trying to do a freaking connect to it. Really? What are the socket types on the host? Wait, I mean, the, uh, the ones in the guest or a datagram, but we go through SO cat. Oh, I see what you mean. I mean, depending on the protocol and that may work with SO cat. Six. It will just do one system call each, and uh, you lose control over. That's all I see there. Message boundaries. That's all I see. All I see via SOCAT is these two on the host. And they're data datagrams. So what is what? Oh, I see what you mean. Okay. So let's I'm do almost man... positive the WPA CLI wants to connect to a TCP socket. No, it wants to connect to Unix socket. Okay. Okay. What well, well, we have we have this, was, which is okay. this is a Unix one. And there's also a dash G. But yeah, the question is, does it need a, a control, a, a datagram or a stream socket? Okay, should I try this with a G? Yeah, try it. Okay, it's not hanging. Is it working? Do we have anything? It's hung. It's hung. Okay, it's let's try close. the other one. Let's try the other one, which was this path. Dash G. Also hung. Okay, fine. Fine. You hung, you hung. Let's see what else we can do. Let's see what else we can do. I'm gonna do that again, which is IW um IW plan zero scan. Oh, sorry, too much information. SSID. Okay, well, we got those. Now we got a lot more. Now we got a lot more. I am gonna. Don't worry about my screen, by the way, if you don't see it. I'm just asking a sysadmin if they remember the password. Okay, back. So uh, we couldn't get the what to work, the socket to work. Oh, wait. Oh, no, I just said the ping timeout. Wait, connection reestablished and then connection lost again. It doesn't really work. Wait, I have an idea for why. I have an amazing idea for why. Because, my friends, what was the address again there? Uh, wi Fi box zero. I don't have an IP address here. Oh, set set that to ten zero zero two. That's going to be problematic because I also have grep <laughs> inet grep ten 
10 zero. Oh, wait, I don't have 10 zero. No, zero. it's 10 10. It's 10 10. So you're all right. It's 10 10. Oh, okay. We're good. We're good. Okay. So Wi Fi box zero. No, there's no. Does it already run a DHCP server there? No. That's it doesn't use DHCP. Do I? Oh, oh, no. Wait a minute. Um, Inside. Oh, it will be inside, look in, I guess. Yeah, inside Wi Fi box. Inside Wi Fi box. Yeah, see if DHCPD is running in there, in which case you just oh. do an if you just do a DHCPD. Yeah, but you, on. you want, yeah, you may on the host want to make sure to not overwrite the default, default route. routes. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Not add, uh, basically discard <laughs> all the stuff you learn. Except That's why for I, the just, address. I just manually set it to 10.002. Don't use yeah, DHCPD. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. manually. <laughs> you know the, uh, the client IP address range? So that you're not going to run it. Or, yes, yeah, I do. Don't worry about you it. You know what I mean? If there are any which are not part of the DHCP range, so that you can statically claim them. And there's zero two. Just do it. Trust me. <laughs> I, play, okay. I use this a lot. So ten one. That works. Yep. Okay. Yep. Now let's do uh, PAE. Nothing this yeah, but time. You're, oh, that's this all time. Unix domain sockets. Look. How, oh, wow. Okay. Because the protocol doesn't really care. It has its own framing. It just uses data game sockets because it's there you easier. Go. It worked. Now I got okay. something new to fix. Yes. <laughs> good one. Very much good one. Okay, I got the password. I got a password. Now let's do this. Wow. If we network. wanted to be really clever, they could use a um, ZIO console to have a Unix socket on the host, and then on a, in the inside it would be a virtual COM port. Wait, 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 wait. Before we continue, let's do this port as well. Uh, we do SSID that fail. Is it equal sign? That network needs three, three arguments. arguments. Oh. Okay. Now we do set network zero. I mean, you can also do list networks. Great. Yeah. Set network yeah. uh, zero. Uh, PSK. Now I need to set. The you want to? Uh... This is a public Wi-Fi. That which which is why I'm not worried. Okay. Uh, of a hospital. <laughs> If it's a public guest Wi-Fi, then yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, now we can do um, list networks. Okay. Now I can do connect. No, not connect. What was the what was the command to connect? Was it use? Was it okay? First, let's do save config. Okay, which means if I come to user local Etsy Wi-Fi box app config and we do this there you go okay but it says disabled we need to change that uh, you set, can, it's, it's disabled just an other verbal yeah set zero disa disabled zero fail then i'm done is it disabled no or it's failed it... uh, you have to false okay fine let's do and this part is not very well documented, by the way, just FYI, it's status. Okay, now I want to do, what do I want to do? I Let me select network, that's what I want to do. Select network zero. Okay, now it says okay. Now we have to wait. And we can also just, do... Just status, do a status and see if it's status. scanning. It is a scanning. Yep. I can force a scan. Feel busy, no, so it's, it's doing busy. something. If it's already scanning, you something? can't force a scanning. I see. Okay, do we have anything in here? D message. Failed to what is this? No, this is from God knows when. Never mind that. Okay, status. Still scanning. Why are you it's scanning for scanning. so long? It's stuck in scanning. Yeah. This is a common problem with our the I the Newer Wi-Fi cards frequently get stuck in this state. Is what I found. My my AX two tens all the time get stuck in scanning state. 
Okay. Come on, buddy, you can do this. I believe in you. List the configs. Maybe it scans, but there's none active. Yeah, it's still disabled. No, it's disabled equals one. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, because Set. of that, it would scan. Let's go out and edit the file it. and do a reconfig. <laughs> set zero. Uh, there should be also a help, by the way. Help set. Oh. There you go. Oh, it's set now. You keep doing set, and it's set network. Oh, I'm so dumb. I'm so sorry. Set network zero. Uh, disable disable equals zero. Disable zero. zero. Okay. Save now config. Now okay. Now show your config. It's correct. There you go. Scan. Go for it, buddy. Scan now done. Show status. 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 Disconnected. Reconfig. But not scanning. Type, just type. Just, just do reconfig. Select network. Bullet. Re reconfigure? Is this it? Just reconfig. Enter. Reconfig. Enter. Okay. Now do a status. Yeah. Talk about being a pain. Okay, let's do something else. Uh, IP, not IP, sorry, IW, IW, VLAN zero info. What do you have for me? Nothing yet. Okay. Uh, select, oh, wait, list networks. Okay. Select network zero. Okay. Status, scanning. Show me connecting you. Sorry, I don't want to curse because we're still recording, you know. Tail dash. It's a bit late for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to say messages. Oh, we have something in here. Yeah, I guess. Periodic stuff going on. I don't see anything regarding Wi Fi. That's so weird. Should we just restart the W? Yes. Okay. I would, um, I would actually uh, just completely uh, uh, restart the Wi Fi box. Restart the yeah, yeah, Wi Fi exactly. box. Okay. You don't have to type exit. Just you know, the network, exit. and then the network ID. Okay. Reconnect is also and this one will disconnect. Okay. Okay. Wi-Fi box start. Okay. What about Wi-Fi box zero? It exists. You, in... you, had, you need to reset the IP address on it. Yes. There we go. Okay. This is done. Let's also have a console. It hasn't booted yet. Slow Linux. I thought that title usually went to Solaris, but not anymore, apparently. Okay, we have something. IW land zero info. It doesn't tell much. I hate these new commands. Yeah. This part is good. Let's do WPA CLI with that status. I'm so glad to see and... that command working. <laughs> I know, right? So apparently it was the dash G, not the dash P. Oh, really? Yeah. That would be another piece of the puzzle. Yeah, dash P is path to control socket and dash G is global control. Okay. Yeah. Why aren't you connecting list networks? Everything is ready for you. You just have to connect. You just have to connect, buddy. Come on. Okay. I, wonder... I don't... Yes, sir. No, I just... I'm looking at your WPA that I saw there and what's in. I got to look at mine to see. I, you have this control group you equals have to zero. Specify... Control interface group equals zero. And I don't think I have that in mine. I don't oh. know why you, you have that. Uh, it was uncommented. Sorry, it was commented. So I just uncommented it. I com uncommented yeah, I it. I don't yes. have that in mine. So I'm not sure what that does. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna do won't... something weird. I'm gonna do... uh, can you uh, reassociate it? Um, I guess reassociate. Okay, 
reconnect reconnect you know you normally okay I, I do have an idea as well which is doing this pkg install wi-fi box dash iwl wi-fi no 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 that, that's, no 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 it's For already sure. installed because if you didn't have it it wouldn't, you wouldn't get to that point. You wouldn't get to the interface and everything else wouldn't, oh, wouldn't see. be there at all. Yeah, yeah. It's, the generic package, I believe, includes all of the interfaces. It's just oh, the meta package. In the, in the image. And the, the other ones specifically contain only that single device. Mm -hmm. So generally, you just install a Wi-Fi box and don't fuss with the mm -hmm. other ones unless you're... IW LAN zero scan is working fine. Um, What's your status here? Uh, right, just, I was trying to read the manual. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah, if you have any idea for why it's not connecting, shoot. Stupid question is: Will Wi-Fi uh, physically disabled from transmitting uh, with some switch or something? Hmm. Can we well, get debug? Yeah. Can we get debug messages in here? I don't know. Um, who's the best friend to ask? I see a dump. Uh, WPA CLI uh, debug level. Yes, that. And the command would be log level. Okay, log level. Info. I'm going to set it to debug. Okay. Status. I don't see anything debuggable here. I'm going to say uh, select network zero. Okay. It's failing to complete the scan for some reason. I've seen that's. A, I've got that's Nix weird. in this state. Because when I do it manually, like it works. Because when, when I do it manually, it works, you know? With the IW try command. A, try, a, try a WPA CLI command of list scan. IW. No, you're, no. Go out to your WPA CLI, your other window. Yes, sir. And and do a list or scan um, list. Results. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's. Oh, it's there. You can see it. It has a MAC address, it has a signal strength, it has a Disable frequency. network zero. Yeah. Scan. Because now it's scan result. Yeah, I mean, it can scan everything fine. Are there any logs for this? Tail dash F or log, log WPA. There is no such thing. There is D message, which we don't care. There is messages which we might care. I'm going to leave this here. And here I'm going to do select network zero. You have to, what's the state of the interface on the uh, guest inside? Maybe WPA doesn't do anything because the interface isn't really up or something? Sorry, what Stupid do you mean, Jan? You, you can't get a scan results if the interface is not. OK. Yeah. I was just wondering if the yeah, we'll look at it. We can look at what zero interfaces uh, down or something. Uh, uh, I... What's your? Uh -huh. Let's go back to that scan results. Yes. Are we got an? In, where's the link that we're trying to use? It's just WPS ESS. There's no WPA or anything on that. But I did connect to it from my phone like two days ago. That's weird. Well, so so is what I'm thinking. Rip the SS or rip your PSK out. Rip my PSK it. out. You're trying to look at the link. It's I WPS see, yes. ESS. So yes. no WPA or WPA two on it. So get rid of the key. You mean it's a public Wi-Fi? That's, That's why it can't associate. That's why it can't associate. Is because you're trying to use a key and it's not a keyed network. Oh, Go to your WPA. Oh. Supplicant file and, and would also say, explain and where you couldn't say find a key management equals none, or you can do it through the command line with fifteen different. 
Hell yeah. Keep banging at it. You'll get there. <laughs> Man, uh, WPA uh, supplicant.com. Key MGM. It's key, it's key under bar MGM T equals none. GMT equals none. Yes. Yes. Um, I wonder if. Yeah. Oh, maybe non in capitals. Um, that also means that it's oh, the yes. password you used wasn't for the public network. Okay. So we have to find out where else that password was used. <laughs> I, I know, right? Talk about password management. You show your config. Let's see your config. It, it did what we think because I think your PSK is. Oh, still wait. Going current. Big. Current. It's connected. There you go. Connected. Wow. No, that's what it was. It was an actual public network. <laughs> yeah, uh, completely unkeyed. IPA. Okay, does it get an IP automatically in the Wi-Fi box? Mm, it should, I guess. No, no, I don't uh, think you see it. No, I don't think you see it. Go look at the host now. The Wi-Fi interface in the host. Okay. Wi-Fi box zero. Look at Wi-Fi okay. box. And the... Okay. And ARM 10002. Aren't they running a DHCP client inside of the virtual machine? It should. I mean, I assume that's the whole point of Wi-Fi box, but I don't see a DHCP thing in here. Okay, wait. Now, now, that we got, on? Now, now, now that we got this on, one second. Here's what I'm going to do. Bye-bye. Uh, one, two, three. Wi-Fi box stop. You like typing commands. Y y y what do you mean? <laughs> it's Wi-Fi box restart. Oh, that. Oh, yeah. Okay, sure. <laughs> it's control R restart. Enter. It's doing something. It got an IP address, gentlemen. There it you got go. an IP address. Okay, now in here, what I'm going to do, you should be back on soon. No, not yet, because I still have to do... I still have to do um, if config uh, Wi-Fi box, it's... not in here. If config Wi-Fi box that. Yes, I do in the route. It's already, but, it was already there. But because I know that I can't do much things in there, here's the thing. Uh, I'm going to do IPA. We got an IP address. Ping that. 8.8.8. .8 .8. Well, you can do that. Ping 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. And ping anything. There you go. Working. You're connected. Okay. Now, iperf. Oh, there is no iperf. Can I install iperf on this? Yeah. Uh, What's the package? I don't manager? think you have a package manager. I don't think you have one. That's part of the okay. problem. <laughs> That's Just, part of the uh, problem. Do it on the host and configure it correctly. Just create well, you would have to you need to create a route to the iperf server through 10.0.0.1. Yes. .1. The host route is enough. Yeah, yeah, just a host route. That's all you need. No, no. I, here's the thing. So now so this Wi-Fi box should be able to ping this at that. Uh no, because it doesn't have a route to it. No, no, no. It's no, default it, route. no. Now, what I'm saying is that it, the Wi-Fi box is going to go to the Wi-Fi access point. The Wi-Fi access point is going to go to the hospital's router, and then the hospital's router oh, is going to come okay. back to my uh, yep, Ethernet yep. machine. Now, okay, so which one is firewalled, gentlemen? That's the other question. I'm going to try this one. Oh, oh, oh no. you It probably doesn't like the route back because that packet's going to come from 10.0.0.2. Yes. And you're yes. Gonna, it's going to try and route it over the other interface. And I actually, that should work. The uh, question is weak host model. You accept your local IP addresses on any interface. Is there anything on this yeah. machine? No, there's almost nothing there. God, the okay. it's literally made just to run the Wi Fi NIC and create a device that you run can use VF, from the host. Run what? FSH and see how tiny the file systems are. I don't even know if you have DF. Okay, it's, it's there. <laughs> that was funny. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's a, it's a. Uh, if I remember right, the download for the for the image itself is forty five to sixty five megabytes, depending on 
which one it selects. Hmm. So I have no utilities to do any kind of testing. Oh well, there's there's you know that that thing which is called you know IP tables, which is not bad, I guess. Um, I'm trying to find anything that I can do a uh, network. Uh, oh, NC. Please Net tell cap? me there's NC. No net. No, no, no. Not even close. NC? Not even close. No, none of them. No NC. Uh, BSD no net. netcat or something maybe. BSD nothing. No, it's a really, completion? It's really, really, really stripped. I don't understand why you can't. You just add a host route to some test site on the, on the host. Because I don't know if 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 here's the thing. Um, if I change the default gateway of my, no, no, I don't. I'm default not a gateway, default a single gateway. Host a static address. host route. Oh, sorry. I'm dumb. Apologies. Apologies. I'm gonna do route route add add okay, eight dot so. eight dot eight dot eight. Let's do a machine that I control so we can do a speed okay. test. Well, I, um, I was just going to say uh, do DNS test. with server. Oh, yeah. Don't, um, don't, don't, don't screw your default DNS server. I, yes. That's why I assumed he's using 9999. That's why I'm saying use 888 as a test because then we can ping oh, and, uh, four, and four, run four, dig. Four, and, whatever. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to add this one, which is this, to 10001, right? Slash 32. No. Second number needs to be slightly. The first number is the second number. Eh, no, that should be right. That should be fine. Yes. Okay. Did. Okay. Now. The gateway hey, will be. Okay. Yeah. Trace route dash N. Okay. It's going correctly. Very much so. Okay. Oh, this is why I couldn't ping back my. Uh, my my machine because it's going over the other router. Okay, now I understand why. Okay, now I'm gonna run an iperf on my server, and then iperf from here to that. There you go. Okay, it's not that bad, but maybe the limitation is on my uh, receiving end. By the way, I am not sure. But I the need signal isn't too good. You're getting some retries. You got. Something busy. I got something busy. Gotcha. It's a public Wi-Fi. It's a yeah. public Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah. True, true. Yeah. It's a shared medium. It's I don't yeah. know which signal strength, how busy, what else is messing around because if I remember correctly, it picked a 2.4 gigahertz frequency. So all other well, all we... kinds of other crap could be there on the same frequency. Yeah. Yeah, true that, true that. Yeah. If you retransmits are nothing to worry about on a congested Wi-Fi. No Wi-Fi, yeah. Exactly. 50, 50 is not a few. 50 is not a few, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, your, your, congestion, your congestion window collapsed to 24 kilobytes. I mean, this thing went in the tank. Yep. <laughs> What's your problem? Sorry, having cat no interference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is this is now, wow. you're, now it completely collapsed. One point four one k byte window. We <laughs> uh, just a question: Could there be any issues with uh, if the physical interface on the Ethernet is kind of somehow bridged to that? Could it be that you see uh, ICMP redirects uh, messing with your back path? What? That the system will see uh, the traffic and will then say, "Hey, uh, ICMP redirect. This IP address is really here on this interface. Please send it here." On the on who? Accidentally, if okay. if uh, um, do we do redirects alter the routing table anymore or not? Do they show up in the routing table? Uh, I just disable them on all my systems and make yeah, sure. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's why I can't remember it either. Let's look at the host routing table, netsat rn. Oh, gateway host static via Wi Fi box zero. That via Wi Fi box zero. I don't see, yeah. Okay. I don't see anything that we should interfere with this. Good. And if we look inside the Wi Fi box, uh... PR, right? Yeah, it basically works as expected. 
Yeah, it um, just has a default route and a, and a link local route back yeah. to it. You could actually, you could actually add to it a set of locals that said how to get to all the stuff that's on the host via ten zero zero two. I see what you mean. Yes. Port forward services. Yeah, I am also wondering about this. If I go, wait, we had it open here. Um, go back. Cat core. No. no oh, wait. Maybe there. there's nothing. Okay. You uh, can turn debug on. I mean, that's about. Ah, oh, this is the one that I wanted. I wanted to change these in the future. And set them to uh, what do you call that? Set them to um, hundred, the CGNet IP address. Set them to what? The, to the CGNet uh, IP that address. That could be a problem when your provider actually uses that as intended. Really? Yes. Wait, I mean, really? if, wait, wait, wait. If if you're in a hundred network, then go into a. Uh, um, an RFC, an RFC, an RFC, an RFC 1918 network. Then you go to another CGNet network. It should work fine. No, if you have, yeah, exactly. If you have the triple NAT uh, sanity, then yes. But if you're, um, if my if home network is a CGNet prefix and you're, you're uh, getting a CGNet uh, 164 no, 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 something no. address on both sides, then you have an no, issue. No, of course. Yeah. But no, mo most ISPs don't do that. In the house, they provide an RFC 1918. And then after your house, they, they do the CGNet interfaces. This is the CGNet IP yeah. addresses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the reason why I wanted to do that, because I do actually use 10.0.0 in my VPNs and such, you know? So it wouldn't make well, sense. Well, you can but just, if, if you just change the IFE0 to one that you're not using. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, this yeah, is this is I, working. Mm -hmm. I I do that because ten zero zero one is in all my ten slash is in all my firewalls and stuff. So exactly. I just don't like like to use ten anywhere. So I I have private IP space that I can use. Um, and then there's the slash fourteen or twelve range, right? On a seventy two hundred sixty two sixteen. Yeah. Yep. That one yeah. is underutilized because all of the... it doesn't have the need. Yeah, uh, all of those of are. Bytes. So you can often use them even on people who have filled up both the slash 16 and the slash 8. A lot of them somehow don't know about that. There's a third, third prefix for them to squander. Don't you mad? Uh -uh. So I need if I need to do a speed test without iperf. No, wait, I can do it with iperf. That's not the question. You can do it with iperf from the host. Can I do it iperf from you the could, host? You, you can yes, also yes, yes. probably I just did that. use. Um, or you can install the uh, speed, speed test, test CLI, yeah, CLI. and then uh, <laughs> have it pick one address. Yes. And when you know the address, specify yes. the address the next time and before. The, two, the, the first time it picks that. one, the second time you set override the choice, and in between the two tests, you have to install the host route so that it goes okay. through. Here's what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to do it over wire. Okay, I deleted the route. Now I'm going to do it over wire. Let's see what we get. Why am I getting this? What happened to my network? Am I doing something wrong on the other side? Not to my knowledge. Why? Yes, you're not getting a. You're not getting a fucking congestion window is why. Your congestion window is collapsed. See what the last happened? column, 1.4 K bytes. That's a single packet. You got a one byte congestion window packet. Why would that happen? This is, the first time, this is the first time I'm seeing uh, restart, this. Restart, restart the server. Restart Re the server. Which server? The iperf-s. Oh, I see. Process. Okay, I closed iperf. I'm going to start it again. It started That's again. Right. Now let's try right, again. Right. No, I'm still collapsed. Okay, that's I'll weird. Right the window open. Okay, fine. It's okay. We can do it with another server. We don't have problem with number of servers. <laughs> let's go to this server. Same data center. Yes, same data center. Remember okay. that you have to install routes if you want to use. Yes, yes, yes. Uh... Yeah. First, let's do it over oh, the you... one. Over the one. To run the server. Uh, first, let's do it over the wire. And then, oh, you know, you're collapsed. Something's gone very bad. 
Ping 10, 10, 1, 180. 10, 10, 180? 180. Is the IP address you're, you're trying That's to... Me. Oh, oh, excuse me. Ping 195-250-72-136. Oh, the IP address that I was doing this. Yeah. Okay. Ping. Can you install MTR? MTR? The non X11 version. It's it's always available. No, only if you install it, it's a package, but yeah. My point is if I can't live without it, you know. Okay. So here's okay. what it looks like. Yeah, that looks normal. Yeah. Yep, no losses, no crazy latencies. Do I have a problem? Much in der here? derivation, but not to my knowledge, this looks fine. And my default gateway is head. My default gateway is that. Also looks very happy. Okay, fine. I'm gonna do iperf on the server again. Uh, iperf, iperf dash s. Okay. Then I'm gonna come back here. Something is happening to my terminal. Terminal, are you okay? Okay. I'm going to come back here and I'm going to do iperf that. What the hell is going on here? Gentlemen, I have no idea. I have absolutely, let's go between a, a jail and a, and a host just to be safe. Jailer list, jailer console. Let's take. Mon0, Mon0 has an IP address, I assume. Yes, it does. iperf to that and do an iperf. I don't have an iperf. PKG install iperf 3. It's interesting because everything else is working fine. iperf server, iperf 3 yeah. server. Yeah. Run. There you go. This is a jail and a host, by the way. Yeah, okay. So okay. jail and a host is working fine. Okay, let me try another data center. How about that? I'm going to go to hackerspace.am, I think. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do an iperf server. Wait, what's the IP address? R E zero, okay, that's the IP address. Let's do an MT, not there, here, MTR. There you go. Does it look fine? Yeah, I guess, right? No issues, right? 10, 10, 1, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, absolutely no issues. Now I'm gonna run iperf server in that data center. Now I'm gonna do iperf to that. What the hell happened here, man? Jan, do you see this? Yes, I do, but could man, run TCP dump along the path uh, where you have access and see where the packets disappear. Maybe start That's... a one uh, megabit UDP flood ping or something with iperf and just see what happens. I'm going to do one more thing. No, sorry, not that. I wanted to do... What did I want to do? What did I want to do? Yeah, I remember. PKG search speed test. PKG install speed test go. Uh, speed test rehash. Speed, speed test go dash L for the servers, I think. Yes. And then dash S for the servers. I want, I think it's this one. Yeah, it's this one. Okay. It looks fine from a speed test point of view, right? Jan, you here? Yes. Oh, look at the upload. 
Look at the upload. It's dying, basically. Yeah, the upload is dying. The download is fine, but the upload is dying. Maybe the upload is just saturated? Yeah, it could because... be. It's midnight, which means there might be uh, backups happening to the, the backup site. Yeah, something like that. Uh, just that the and the public Wi-Fi probably doesn't get priority. I'm not on Wi-Fi though. I am on the wire at the moment. Okay, or the public guest network. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna try something network. else. I'm gonna try running iperf again, but with the dash R. Sure. Ah, we see traffic. There we go. Yeah, hundred. Yeah, hundred to two hundred. Downstream works. Yeah, it's just okay. your upstream, which is fucked. Yeah, okay, okay, this is good. Okay, now let's do it with that server, but this way, route and that slash 32 over 10.0.0.1, right? Good, now I'm gonna do that again. So now it's gonna go over the Wi-Fi. 50. Okay, I mean, it's not that bad for Wi-Fi, maybe, I don't know. Maybe the Wi Fi sucks. Hello, hello, hello. Am I here? Uh, yes, Rod. Hey. Yes, uh, so you are, Rod. I, I, right. I wanted to say when we did you the speed not. test, we realized that um, uh, the uplink was saturated because I'm assuming we're running some kind of a backup right now to the backup site. So I just ran speed test again with the dash R. Are you running alternative congestion controllers of any kind anywhere? Having seen a congestion window of 1.4 K bytes is an extremely bad sign for a network. It I'm on you cubic. Congestion. You're running cubic. Okay. I'm talking about anywhere else because you could be running somebody else that is crushing no. your congestion. Node. The, the process is that this T480 is connected to a microtic and the microtic should be doing microtic stuff. But what else is connected to the micro tick? There could be somebody else connected to the micro tick that is abusing the network and will not basically e is causing high packet loss e when the job's uh, running. Oh, that's a good point. And I'm telling you, if I'm seeing a congestion window of 1.4 from an IPERF running on a node, you have a network congestion problem somewhere. This is bad. Yep. This is seriously bad. This is a it basically it basically means you can't transmit two packets without one of them being lost. Oh. Yep. Which is really annoying because it punishes your flows. Yes. But they may have just configured that for very large uh -huh. flows. So Looks like it's back up. A bit over aggressive. Uh, yeah. It looks like it's back up. I, I assume I assume the backup process is done. I'm gonna do remove. Wait a second. Could they have some kind of throttling if it's a public access network so that yes. they busy again punish 1. you 4, or one point yeah, four K by windows a... is collapse. I... That that no. is defined as congestion collapse. What I mean is, could it be that they have some kind of throttling set up if you nope. run out of your quota? They, um Make your network uh, unusable for a while. No, 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 no. Yeah, there are there are means... no such things. I'm I'm going to be very okay. clear. There there are no such things. Okay. Like the, one one point the... four k bytes per second. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's terrible. Congestion collapse. It's it's one packet at a time. Wait a second, yes. next packet situation. It's really yes. completely unusable for anything. Uh, with more bandwidth or latency requirements than in, uh, fetching emails. In the IETF, congestion working groups and, and the transport working groups, we consider a one packet window to be a fully collapsed network. Of course. That network so, is effectively unusable. So, okay, let's, let's come back to the main topic. Wi-Fi box works. Thank you to the authors. Uh, now we want to do a, um, now I would like to find a way to do a speed test of the Wi-Fi chip itself. Can I get information from here? IW, WLAN uh, info? If you have, 
if you have an ability to have a node directly on the other side of what the Wi-Fi is talking to, you could run iPerf over that, but you're, you're going to fight the problem is it's a public access shared network medium that's not going to be very performant. Yeah. I suspect, given you told me it's Is there something hospital. like WaveMon installed? Sorry, Jan, go again. Do you have WaveMon or something installed? What is that? Uh, it causes interface to display that kind of crap. No, no, no. So this is the gateway of the host currently, okay? Because the only thing it can tell you is the basically modulation and data rate, not the bandwidth. But uh, you can say, can you run IW def W uh, LAN zero uh, link? Uh, IW VLAN zero, no, F. Dev VLAN zero link. Oh, I have a TX bitrate of 300, which is something I've never seen on a FreeBSD laptop. Well, I've seen Correct, it. you're running, you're, because we can't go over 54. <laughs> no, we can, the, we can do V11N. Okay, this is the whole reason you run Wi-Fi box. <laughs> okay. Is because okay. you're using the Linux drivers, and the reason. Linux drivers can do AC and AX mode on your Wi Fi card. So you're much more likely to see these yeah. higher bit rates. Okay, well, this, this, is, this, this is a higher bit rate, that's for sure. Now, the problem that I'm encountering now, which obviously we can't fix from here, is that the machine, the, sorry, not the machine, the, um, what do you call this? The Wi-Fi access point that I connected to is not connected to the same router that my wired is connected to. So we cannot do a test between Wi-Fi box and back to myself, which is sad, but it's fine. I mean, the beauty here is that uh, we are able to configure Wi-Fi box. We are also able to get this beautiful thing to work. And uh, everything is configured in, not here, here, great. And the rest is configured in appliance here. So this is Wi-Fi box. This is app config, which is WPA supplicant. This is Beehive. Yes, sorry, go on. Yeah, for the, uh, I can't pronounce his name, Me Medius. Yes, the guy that Mathias, wanted to yeah. be able to, yeah, yeah. Yeah, wanted to be able to use to use Beehive on Wi-Fi. This Wi-Fi box coupled with bridging the Wi-Fi box zero interface, you can do that. You can bridge that <laughs> Wi-Fi box zero interface to anything you want. I believe. So, of a so Matthias, what you would do is if you have another VM, let's say mm -hmm. this one. Let's say Collabora, great. So this one would have a tap interface and that tap interface would be bridged to Wi-Fi box zero. Now it's gonna go everything over Wi-Fi. So, which means VM edit, no, not edit, VM. And it works because you have a router inside your virtual machine. Yeah, you would need to change yeah. this one. The network type, not the network type, sorry, the network switch should become mm -hmm. Wi-Fi box. That's all what would happen. And I guess the same is also I guess the same is also true about jails. Yeah. So if I create a jail in here, jailer list, uh jailer list, I feel dumb. Jailer list, yes, jailer create dash B Wi-Fi box zero dash A ten zero zero uh three dash D let's yeah. choose the rod. Um, Don't you have to set the uh, prefix or does it default to a host word? Uh, Jailer is pretty smart, actually. What it would do is it would look if you have a um, a Great, prefix uh, on the... You have trouble getting the uh, end-of-life release. It's okay. So it's it, what it does is if you have a prefix on the bridge that you've set, which is Wi-Fi box zero, it would get it from that. And if you have a default router, it would also get that too. But look what it got, 10.0.0.2. Why? Because I am 10.0.0.2. So I can also do gateway, 10.0.0.1. Now it would create this, apparently. So if we remove the debug, or Dan in this case, and do enter, we will have a jail named Rod. Come on, Rod. Come on, Rod. Not, not you, Rod, the other Rod. Just okay. a question. Jailer console Rod. 
Now rod is connected to that. We do now ping 10.1, which would be the Wi-Fi box. Yes. Now if I do uh, cur, not cur, fetch dash that if config.bsd.am, I, what do you mean? Oh, of course, we're not curl. I should get an IP address. Why are you always arguing with me? There we go. There we go. Yes. Okay, great. And now all of the traffic of this jail is going to go over Wi Fi. Incredible. I've learned so much during this session. Please don't lose the recording before. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that almost happened what yesterday. Is? Why, why is my video off all this time? I totally forgot. Yes. And I'm wearing a free BSD t-shirt as we are, you know, developer summits. Uh, yeah. Uh, this was, yeah, this was nice. And I love that Jailer just worked with that. This is very good. This is very good. Uh, what did Jailer change? I think it changed that. Okay, good. I have one question for you, Antonik, about Jailer's uh, behavior there. Yes. Does it run SysRC from the host uh, on a jail? Does it run SysRC from the host to the jail? Uh, yes. Or does it yeah. run it through JXX? No, 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 no. The way it works is it runs uh, it. Are you aware how SysRC way. works? No, no, it, it, it does this, sysrc dash for the file. Now, uh, do something cheeky, please. Yes. In, go, open that uh, uh, rcconf. The rcconf of the jail? Yeah, with vi or whatever. Um, rod. Let's see, rcconf. There you go. And put in. Mm -hmm. And... Um, just um, how about uh, logger foo? Okay, yes. Try, close it and try what happens. Now I close it. Now I and do what? So this is the command. Sys or C. Now do var log messages, and we should have uh, on the here. file. You have to run it on that file. Sysrc on that which file? The same way as you would do with, uh, and just set foo equals bar or something, some key which doesn't mean anything. From the host to the guest, you mean? Yeah, because now the mm. issue is that. Sysrc I see what you mean. By just Here's the thing. The I, no, no, no. I, I know. I know. Dude, my, my job is literally security engineer. No. The host touches the jails rcconf only when it's creating the jail, not when okay, so later. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. not done, of course. Yes. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. okay. It's just because I had to uh, ask you because you were. Uh, you do realize that people pay me money. In, uh... You do realize that people pay me money to fix security vulnerabilities, right? <laughs> yeah, that doesn't one more mean thing. that uh, yeah, you. I, I thought making, of. Uh... I, I thought of. I thought of this syntax. Let me know what you think. So I have the current syntax that you saw, which is very simplistic. You know, like for your average Docker coming to FreeBSD person. I guess address and gateway, and if you also want, you can do like network mask, right? So this is looks nice. But for the advanced, does it users, also uh, um, accept site annotation as yes. address? Yes. Okay, then it's yes. Nice. Uh, but I also thought of this very weird syntax, which would be jailer create whatever 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 dash n, and here you can give it a very nice string like this: uh, bri bridge equals Wi-Fi box zero. Uh, comma, uh, address equals whatever the address is, comma. Okay, uh, so you're reinventing this. Earlier. Gateway equals whatever. Uh, and then you can do this and then repeat the process again. So now your jail would have two VNet interfaces, which, is, which was what my use case literally today, because I have mm -hmm. a jail that has a public IP address and a private one yep. to connect to the database. And I, I actually like this syntax a lot. It, it, it sounds very nice to parse as well, you know? Like, it, it's very it much is. easily parsable. Uh, as long as you don't uh, have to use comma, that's the obvious separator. What, what else would you, if I use or don't use comma? Yeah, exactly. You, you have, you want, 
basically to keep it easy to pass and shell, mm -hmm. you do want to avoid having to quote mm -hmm. the separator. Yeah. I mean, this also so works. You can basically just set, change IFS and use uh, set dash F dash dash uh, yeah. and call it a day. Yeah. This also looks I, nice. I have to bail, folks. So I'll see you next time. Rod, thank, thank you very you much. Thank you so much, Rod. Yeah. Good so, luck. Yeah. That's easier on the eye, but it's a bit harder to pass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Well, I mean, it's for me personally, it, so. the important one would be like to have a semicolon to have now the definition of the other interface. You know, why not accept multiple dash ends? I suck in parsing that. Sorry, I just a skill issue, not a not a technical uh, limitation. So, you would use a get op s in initial script. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. If we're done with the recording, I can show you some crazy ideas. But hey. okay. Uh, Previous D jailer vim uh, lib jailer core. Uh, create. One, wait, yes, sir. For a quick question. Uh, when you said um, if you had been on the same inter, um, sorry, on the same. Uh, uh, router, you could have tested uh, the the connection speed from the yes. yeah, speed test. So you you would have used uh, speed test uh, dot go uh, dash go, and I mean, what would be the even if it's sure you can't so, do it? What would be the syntax? Yes. Yeah. So speed speed test dot go is gonna speed test go is gonna go to the speed test server. Right, but my uplink is sucky right now because it's a public Wi Fi in a hospital. And the other one is trying to go, which I did try, I proved to my server, but again, I'm limited by the router's uplink. So, what I wanted to do is for Wi Fi box to go to my router and then from the router come back to the host over the wire. So, because the host's wire is gigabit. I wanted to see what the Wi-Fi would actually be, right? But apparently I couldn't do it today. I'll, I'll do it tomorrow when I go back to the customer site. Um, but that's the idea at least, which is I wanted to do like a pure Wi-Fi testing, not, not internet testing, but Wi-Fi testing. Uh, actually, we can do some a little bit of a comparison because we saw that on the wire, it was 400, right? 400 gig a second. Remind me if I'm wrong. Oh, sorry, 400, 400 mega, meg a second. Let's actually go back there and see. Uh, if we go back here, uh, Tmux attach. So here we have on the host, do we have anything set? Uh, routing numeric four. Uh, we have nothing. So now I'm going to do this. I'm going to do speed test go on the host, which is going to go over the wire. Okay. Let's see what happens. I care about the download. I know the upload is going to be sucky because we're uploading backup at the moment, if I'm not mistaken. Until it does that, okay, fine. 400, 500, 450. That's the overall estimation of the download speed. Now let's go to the jail of Rod, which is going, everything is going over Wi-Fi here, right? Mm -hmm. So let's set up some of these. Oh, great. Now I'm going to be using the FreeBSD package server over Wi-Fi. Uh, pkg 0 frankfurt due to stupid reasons. Release 0, remove the SRV, pkg install uh, speed test go. Yes, let's see what the speed is. Do I have a resolver? <laughs> I totally forgot to check. We'll see, I guess. Um, so 428. For the download, the upload is sucky at the moment. I guess I don't have a resolver. BSD.am. I do have a resolver. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. This usually takes a while because the free BSD servers are far away from Armenia. I need the local mirror. Okay, that's good. Okay, we're getting 1.7 megabyte. Good. Okay, that's usually what I get on the wire. Okay, show me something more. Okay, not bad, not bad. Now let's do a speed test go dash L, bring in the servers. So this is going over VirusNet Telecom. They actually named it the ISP VirusNet Telecom. And let's send it to them. Let's see what the speed is. Oh, but I don't know what the VirusNet Telecom speed is usually. 
Oh, I don't know what the speed of that operator is because the other ISP is 400, 500. I don't know what the speed is of this ISP. Can I connect to this ISP? No, the wired network is different than the public Wi-Fi network. Damn. At 55 is in, in, in and of itself, right, for Wi-Fi. Okay, usually I get like 10 yeah, on, yeah. on, on, on free BSD itself, you know? Exactly. I, I don't on think I've ever done and, uh, AP, but yeah. 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 Uh, Beautiful. So, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, so, unless there's another Wi Fi network here that I can connect to, scan results. Well, let's do this. I was, I, I was, I was mostly interested in the, in the, in the how. Uh, uh -huh. And, the result is 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 still is still I think uh, um, uh, significant in any case. Mm -hmm. um, so, if you want to go back to to what you were going to show uh, uh, in the jailer code, that's that's I think that's great too. Being conscious. No, of the... yeah, no. I was just gonna say that Jan. I guess your idea was to do this, right? Um, so I get it. Every time I get the N, for example, I append yep. to it, right? You could either, yeah, if you have a separator, you can yeah. uh, do the, you can append. So yeah. you know and then, the and then separator pause separately. is um, not white space, so not uh, space, top, or new line. Then mm -hmm. the shell will not erase uh, empty things or, mm -hmm. or basically join empty mm -hmm. uh, fields. Yeah. Um, so you could, or you could just not. Uh, go through the interaction with set, mm, then you can do other things and to use set and yeah. uh, use uh, basically uh, field yeah. separation. You would have to use a function because otherwise you're fucking up yeah. the uh, argument list of a function while you're using get opt s. Yeah. So um, what you can do is you can basically uh, use uh, the variable expansion with the in in uh, braces with colon plus and yeah. minus. Yeah. To, well, I mean, to be, to be fair, I think I think I'm... the separator as needed. Then yeah. you don't have to clean up any separator at the end. Now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the syntax at the top for the newcomers because mm -hmm. it, it's very simple, you know, address, gateway, mm -hmm. net mask. Uh, and I also have the version of like dash six and you provide an IPv6. Right, mm -hmm. uh, I like that model, and I'll also have I mean, this model for like the advanced users. You know, bridge equals whatever comma you address. You want um, the FreeBSD Lua uh, interpreter in base has a UCL yeah. parser. Um, oh, really? We have at least in current. I don't know if it's already in fourteen one. Oh. Let me uh, ah, but that that does break my jailer model, which is the whole point of jailer is. You create jails with jailer, and then you can delete jailer, but keep using jails. You know, yes, of course. Uh, but you could expand that. Ah, so the UCL parser would be called from the jail.com. No. no. I mean, I would say you can have UCL files as an input, and then you expand that into a jail conf. I see what you mean. Okay, yeah, that makes more sense. Okay. Okay, I had no idea we have that. I'll check for sure. Apropos UCL, uh, let's see, man, we should have it in the Lua uh, department, which I don't see in 14, I think. Apropos Lua, here are Lua things. Uh, man, is it menu Lua? No, that's for the bootloader. Could be CLI Lua, I don't know what that is. No, this is, a, this is a command line parser, my friend. This is a command line parser. Uh, what about core Lua? That's literally the core. Yeah, sorry. That was a very dumb idea to check. Uh, apropos Lua. Maybe config Lua. Maybe config um, Lua. So, yeah, it looks like it's new in 15. It's new in 15. Okay, I'll wait, and then we'll integrate um, so, it um, later. Yeah. Let me check. Yeah. So on fifteen, oh, and let me do the find dash s. We did some good uh, 
beehive things today. This was very nice. With 9 PFS and... and yeah. I, I've learned so much. Yeah. Matthias, I guess for your developers, the obvious option would be that the laptops use Wi-Fi box and the VMs connect to the Wi-Fi box bridge. And you can now have Linux VMs, Windows VMs, FreePSD VMs, or even the jails like I did now. And the jails could just connect to that as well. Yeah. I guess Podman, I will, I will test that. Podman would work as well, by the way. Uh, yeah, you then can just I will specify the bridge. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, Anyways, yeah, can. Uh, gentlemen, anything else? We've been going for a couple of hours, or do we want to do a closing? Don't lose the don't lose the recording. No, 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 that, <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, which one am I supposed to share, though? I think it's. Oh, no, maybe here. Well, thank you all, everyone. And uh, please do like and subscribe. We will see you next week. And don't forget to join the free BSD Developer Summit Fall of 2024, day two, tomorrow on YouTube. Cheers. Thank you so much.